That's called a teaser, right? Not, not a trailer, but a teaser. All right, so I'm going to continue then with the very with a more informal um, presentation, and you can read the more formal one in the next edition of the. Uh, Historical Society. What I want to do is just to hand out some documents then for you to look at, and every, I think every two people might be able to get one. Every two persons, yeah. Okay. Um. All right. And then I'm going to ask some people just to read a couple of things from those documents. All right. Okay. <clears throat> The women's suffrage movement um, gained momentum after World War II, to be, to be very specific. And out of World War II, uh, several, several documents came, came out. One was the, the um, 1936 Declaration of the Atlantic Charter, which Winston Churchill gave, uh, just to declaring the, what they thought that the world should look like after, after World War II. Later to that, the um, UN was established in 1945, and out of the, the Atlantic Charter came two, two major international um, UN conventions on which the women's suffrage movement relied. 1948 was the United Nations Declaration of Human Rights, and 1952 was the United Nations Convention on the Political Rights of Women. Both of these documents are, are, are documents that, that talked about the self-determination and universal suffrage in part. And the women's suffrage movement actually used these documents in their own documents and publicly educated people on these two conventions. And I must say that when I began this project, my own prejudgments about the movement had to be thrown out the window. It was a very sophisticated doc, uh, movement that used these conventions to advance its cause both locally and internationally. So for example, in, in their public education classes just prior to 1962, the women's suffrage movement would have had lectures given by someone like Althea Mortimer, for example, on the Atlantic Charter. They would have also talked about um, Winston Churchill's Iron Curtain speech as, 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 a, as the ground for, for, for advancing their, their cause. They also use, as I said, the 1948 Declaration of Human Rights and the UN Convention on the Political Rights of Women to actually ground their case. And when I, when I saw these documents within their documents, I really had to, to sit up and take another look at this movement, which began around 1948. All right, so you had two women um, around 1948, Mary Ingram, who lived Hospital Lane North, and her good friend, Mabel Walker, who lived Hospital Lane South. These two women were very, very good friends. And uh, they lived in the same community in which I lived. And they also belonged to the Improved Benevolent Protective Order of Elks, which is still an Elks Lodge on Blue Hill Road, just adjacent to, the, to Government House there. And in this lodge, there was a committee called the Civil Liberties Committee. And this particular committee of the lodge um, was one that worked and tried to improve the, the, the situation in regard to racial discrimination and racial segregation in the Bahamas. Its motivation really, or its, 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 um, its motive really, was to get rid of the disabilities disenfranchised people, black people by and large, but not entirely, had in the Bahamas. So Mabel Walker was the chairperson of this civil liberties committee that was part of the, a committee under the Elks Lodge um, just on, on Blue Hill Road there. And between the two of them, having gone to Parliament several times, many times I should say, to actually see their husbands perform in Parliament, because the husband of Mabel Walker was Dr. C.R. Walker, who was an independent in Parliament, and so was Rufus Ingram, Mary Ingram's husband, who was um, the representative for Crooked Island, Crooked and Acklands Island in, in the 40s. They would often go to Parliament to watch their husbands perform and would say to themselves, you know, what is it and why is it that women in the Bahamas don't have, don't have the right to vote? These women knew that, for example, in Jamaica, women had the vote since 1944, Trinidad since 1946, and Barbados in 1950, and the rest of the English-speaking Caribbean in 1951. They knew this. They also knew that women in Britain and Canada had the vote and the um, and, and, uh, United States in the 1918 and 1920s. And their, their affiliation with the lodges really gave these women 
um, their political education, for one, and also their sense of democracy, because in these lodges they actually voted and, and had their own um, president and vice president, etc. So it was in the lodges that they, they honed their own leadership skills and came to understand their own local situation, all right, and what they wanted to, the social just injustices that they were, were living under, and how they had to then move to, 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 make those, to make those different. They had affiliations with persons abroad also, the lodges abroad, who, their, their parent lodges actually, and they would try these lodges. And so they had tremendous exposure to, to the world outside. And of course at this time we're talking about the British Empire, so we're talking about people who listened avidly to, to the BBC and knew what was going on in the British Empire and the United States. All right, so Mary Ingram and, and Mabel Walker, best friends, they're called lodgies because they belong, to the, they belong to the lodge. They get together and they decide to put through their lodge, the Improved Benevolent Protective Order of the Elks, um, a petition in 1952. All right, and I've got a copy of it there for you. And um, it begins on page 55, actually. If, if you can just look at it. Does every two persons, is, is anybody can, can share? So can, can you share with somebody, is that possible? What's yeah? this is from the vote? This is, this is from, from, the, from, the, um, from Parliament itself, is that what you're asking? House? Yes, yeah. yes, all right. It begins, um, it says page 55. Does everybody see page 55? All right, someone just begin to, just, just read the whole thing, because I'm not gonna read the other ones, but I want you to get a sense of the sophistication of, of, of this movement and what they were um, talking about. Anybody just wanna read um, from Dr. Walker right down to the end, loudly? Skibo, thank you. Dr. Walker presented before our petition from the draft of the Improved Benevolent Protective Order of the World and other residents of the Islands of the Republic, which means our health authority. A little more loudly, please. Uh, oh, maybe if you want to even come up, it would be fine. Do you want to come to the front? Just, yeah. Just so we really get a sense of it. Dr. Walker presented the following petition from the Daughters of the Improved Benevolent and Protective order of Elks of the world and other residents of the island of New Providence, which being brought up was ordered to be printed. To the speaker and members of the Honorable House of Assembly, the undersigned daughters of the improved benevolent and protective order of Elks of the world and other residents of New Providence do hereby beg leave to petition your honorable body as follows. That your petitioners are desirous of furthering their opportunities to contribute to the welfare of the Bahamas. That in our modern concept of government, we feel that both sexes should, be, should have the opportunity to share the political life of the country. That women of the Bahamas have for a long time worked faithfully in the public service and during the last war served in the armed forces of the nation. That Bahamian women, like men, are required to pay taxes that the status of women in the Bahamas should be brought up to the status of women in the United Kingdom and other enlightened countries of the world. Your petitioners therefore beg that your honorable body will favorably consider this petition and enact legislation to grant the franchise to the women of the Bahamas. As in duty bound, your humble petitioners will ever pray. Mary Ingram, Lillian Isaacs, Myrtle Ray, Effie Archer, Mamie Ashwood and Jenny Smith, and 438 others. 